Hey guys, Berkeley just came out with three new baits. They're optimized for forward-facing sonar and live scope. Really cool, let me run you through them. The first is the Kredge, like this, a jerk bait with a weird looking lip. There's the finisher and the power switch. So before we talk about these, let's talk about how guys are catching them on live scope real quick. So we'll see where we're at and how these actually give you a few more tools in the toolbox to catch those fish on live scope. Now, if you're catching them on the bottom, if they're around stumps and in the heart of a brush pile, you know, drop shots and jigs, all that work. Where guys have really started excelling on live scope lately, the new frontier are those suspended fish, or if there's a brush pile here, there'll be a fish or two. If this is the top of the brush pile, there'll be fish suspended over the top. And here's where, so where it started, obviously the jerk bait, and this is the Berkeley Stunna. Uh, obviously these have been big key players. This is the plus one, the deeper dive in version. These are great to get down to eight, 10, maybe fish in 12 feet, but you're a little bit limited on depth on that. They work great and they, they work in one, two dimensions. One, a jerk bait, they're great for going left and right. A little snap, they go a little bit. A uh, big snap on slack line, pop, pop. You can work that direction. The other plane, up and down, you can re as you reel them in, they go deeper and deeper. A shallow running, a short lift's gonna be like four feet. These will run maybe eight. And so in that plane, you can work left and right a little bit. You can work them down. They're hard to work up. You can snap up, get them up a foot or two, or hold your rod tip high. But really, they, they work at a kind of a constant depth and they get you a little bit of left and right. Once you go past the brush pile, the fish reacts or he doesn't. You watch my live scope, you can speed it up, you can pause it. But once you're past the brush pile, it's done. Uh, it, it does, you know, it, it slow sinks, so I can work a little deeper, but it takes a long time. To get deeper, guys went to the hover rig, uh, hover strolling, Demiki rigs, whatever you want to call it, moping, there's tons of names. It's basically a jig head, and you put, this happens to be a, a max scent uh, flat nose minnow, jerk shads, I mean, all, all sorts of stuff. The key with this is I can throw this out, sink it down quickly, I can get them down to 50, 60 feet in a hurry. Uh, I can put it as deep as I want, fish those fish off the screen. So in the in two dimensional, again, I can sink it really fast. I can put it down to 30 feet and then swim it. I can drop it to 60 feet and swim it. I can put it down one foot, I throw right on him. And then movement, so when I'm coming forward, I can adjust the depth. I can kind of glide it or make it hover. And I come forward, if I stop it, it's gonna, it's gonna fall. Typically the fish, when you see them on the screen, it looks like a dot like that. You wanna bring it just above his head. They, if it's below them, they're not gonna react. If, if it's really clear water, they'll come up higher. If you put it right on them, you can make them react. But you're coming through in one, as I'm coming up to the fish, it's in one dimension here again. I keep it at a constant depth. I can't go left or right. I basically just, go by them. I can twitch it up a little bit. I can kind of dance it and everybody's shaking the rod tip. You know, you get it and you just do these, these small little shakes and, and that makes the bait quiver a little bit, but that's it. I'm working in two dimensions. What these baits bring you is three dimensional and also forward and backwards with the credge a little bit. So instead of just working in two dimensions, I like a flat piece of paper, I can keep it in front of the fish longer. And that's why these baits are what they, what they've termed forward facing optimized. So the Kredge is the first one. Let's talk about that. We came from the jerk bait. This is a sinking bait. And to me, it's not really a jerk bait. It's somewhere between like a flutter spoon, a jigging spoon, which gives you a wobble and all sorts of attraction. I can drop it really fast and a jerk bait where I can kind of go side to side and hover it, keep it in front of it. If you cast this out and have it on a slack line, just feed a total slack, it's gonna fall really quickly, which is key, because as soon as you see a fish, unless they're glued to a brush pile or something, usually those suspended ones, it's, it's a, a countdown. You're losing time, you're getting closer to him, you're drifting towards him. He may swim away, they're often moving, and you know the boat, boat's gonna spook him, so the quicker you put it on, the better. So this casts really well, it's heavy, it sinks quickly if I feed it slack. When it falls, it has, it's like a wacky worm, a general, a senko, any of those, how they shimmy, this thing like shimmies on its side like this and you see the weights in here, it flashes the whole time it's doing it. It's like this really pretty shimming and I'll, I'll see if I can splice a little footage there, you can see it. And the neat thing is it doesn't fall straight down, 
If you feed it slack, it actually goes backwards. The name is Kredge, K-R-E-J, that's jerk spelled backwards, and that's exactly what it does. I throw it out to the fish, if there's a brush pile, and with this bill being straight up, it actually swims upward. So I can sink it as deep as I want, and then if I slow reel it, it's gonna stay pretty flat. If I reel it fast, it's gonna climb up. So I can control the, the depth. Now, if I control the slack, I, if I don't give it very much slack, this thing will fall really slowly, and I can also, also make it almost hover. It won't back up near as much, or if I want it to go fast. So basically, I can sink it really fast to him, feed it slack, slow down, take some slack out, and then I can make it slow work there. Now, if there's a brush pile, and they've termed it crudging, what you do is you swim this thing up to it like a jerk bait. I can snap it. I can make it walk left and right and get in that, you know, in that two dimension as well. But in the three dimensions, I can bring this forward, snap it back and forth. And then if I feed it slack, normally if a fish follows it past the brush pile, he's done. With this, it's going to fall backwards. And if he's following it, if I'm coming behind it, I'm a fish and I'm following it, following it like they love to do. I'm right here. Well, all of a sudden this thing starts drifting back. It's like a glide bait. You know, the swim baits where you turn that thing around in their face and they, they're like, whoa, I'm either going to eat it or run away or do something. It makes them react. So one, I can feed slack, make it come back in the fish's face. Or if there's a brush pile, normally I'm working a jerk bait by it. Fish follows it. He says, eh, not interested. He takes off. Well, guess what? With this, I can put it back in there and I can work it again and a little bit faster this time. Whoop, now nah, it still didn't like it. Really fast this time. Maybe I trigger him or I can just kind of just leave it and kind of play cat and mouse with him. I can work it slower. I can twitch it more. That gives you a lot of versi versatility. And when I, you know what they do a lot of times? They follow these baits all the way to the boat and then they won't commit. Muskies like the figure eight. I don't know about you guys, the figure eight for bass, not my best technique. With this, when I'm starting to get close to the boat, if here's my boat and my cast is out here and working closer and closer, well, normally with, with a Domeki rig with a jerk bait. Once it gets here, like my bag of tricks is over. On this, if I see he's falling it and he's getting too close to the boat, we'll just feed him slack again and then work him. And I'm staying a constant distance away from the boat instead of losing that distance. So the courage, I think, getting that extra depth, still being able to work left and right, but going backwards at any depth and then being able to, to rise it as well, like a fleeing uh, fish to get away from, you know, from a chasing bass. That's going to give you a lot of versatility. This is really going to open up your jerkbait game to any depth that you want. You can get quickly down to them. Now, more along the lines of the hover minnows and the hover strolling and the Domeki rigs and all that, you have the power switch and the, the finisher. Nice thing about the power switch, one, it's a molded-in head. It's built in. This is a clear one. You can kind of see that, that it's the head's already in there. It's not sliding down the hook shank. You're not dealing with that. You can see with my hand is shaking a little bit how much this tail paddles. When you swim it, it's this really subtle uh, shimmy to it. So if you reel it fast, sometimes that I've found that'll trigger them. Uh, it's pretty heavily weighted, so I can throw it and put it right on them. It drops really fast, spirals down, and then once you get it there, you take the slack out, and I can make it so it, it glides down to them. I can make it stay in front of them. And the neat thing about this, they put the, the way this is uh, molded, this bait you can get, instead of just two dimensions, like a Domeki rig, like a hover rig, where it just kind of goes like this and I can twitch it and I'm just shaking it kind of like this a little bit. I can actually, if I pop my line a little bit, like a, like a walking bait or a jerk bait, when you do that snap, snap, this will actually go wildly up and, and pop and stay in place. So I'm getting a lot of action left and right without moving it forward. There again, if the brush pile's here, the regular jig head minnows, you just swim by and you shake it, but once you're past it, you're done. And if he's following it, there's not a lot of triggers. I can go a little faster. I can kill it. Usually when you kill it, you know, they're either gonna bite or they're just done. They go off it. With this one, I add the capability. I can go deeper or shallower. I can go forwards with it. I get two dimensions like the other, but I get that third dimension if I can snap it and go make it go left and right. And that's a huge advantage with these baits. It's something they haven't seen on them. It's that jerk bait type movement. And this, I can just a little tap and I can make it do just a, a little kick out and then bring it back in line when they're following it. Or I can snap it. And I, I mean, you can make this thing walk really big, just like a jerk bait where it really kicks out to the side. So that's some, something they haven't seen. It gives you that extra triggering uh, 
sort of mechanism there to make the fish bite it. And then the finisher is that same principle. Looks like a jerk bait. You see the line ties on the top though. That is optimized to make this thing really kick out and do super wide kicks left and right. Uh, didn't mean to mention on this one as well. They see that internal weight, it works really well. If they're on the bottom, it gives you the capability of you can let this go to the bottom and it's a stand up type design where it's gonna sit on the bottom like that and I can pop it and actually work it as like a jig as well. So it gives you that capability. That's, uh, and a lot of times those small mouth, I know the walleye guys are all raving about that, but for us small, small mouth guys, when they're relating to crawfish and stuff, snapping it off the bottom and getting that poof, boom, big walk left and right's real good. Now the finisher, really, this is more of an aggressive type one. You're not gonna swim it just kind of straight along like you do the, uh, like a Tamiki. This is kind of like that jerk bait where they want that slashing type motion and some guys are calling these slash baits just because it is. It's really wild left and right. I can do little ones. If I just barely pop the rod a little bit, it's gonna give little darts and glides and almost you could almost turn this thing around all the ways. So it gives you that, that option to really trigger them. If they're aggressive and on the hunt, that's where I like the finisher. And especially if they're up on bait balls or really chasing that flash and just the unpredictable uh, movement really helps. And then like you can see, <laughs> that felt great. Uh, would you see what I just did there? How many times on these Damiki rigs are they coming up and you feel the thunk? You see them on the live scope, you see them close in and you feel the thunk in your bait, you set the hook and they're not there. Grabbing it, just kind of slapping it, bunting it. Well, guess what? Finisher, this thing's got treble hooks. And if you get around it like I just showed and the blood dot shows there, you're gonna hook up on them. So if they come after this bait, the hookup ratio on those ones that are short striking is good and you just get that extreme side to side uh side to side motion on the finisher too that can trigger fish all these come in a variety of sizes you can see the credge I well i should say the credge comes in one size it's that standard jerk bait size that seems to be the deal there the finisher comes in this is the larger uh you get the you got them hanging together here's treble hook base love to do this is the nine we have the seven and the five, the seven seems to be an all around one. The five is small. I mean, this is like a crappie size bait, but this thing sinks like a rock too. You can get it down to them quickly. And in the winter time like this, where it's bitter cold out, that's gonna work well. Now the power switch, you can get the great big ones. You know, even some musky guys are using these. The big ones, they come down to little tiny crappie sizes here. These are pretty cool. And when it's good, fish are really finicky, you put one of these on them. You can't get that, that fish to go. The, the school's just been pressured. I'm excited to use that one on them. And a little bit smaller, given the reasonable sizes here. Little ones. And then like the 3 8 and the 5 8 ounce size is what I use the most. It's, so it's versatile with that, that weight. They drop fast. And like I said, you can control the fall just with your sink rate. So a variety of baits. They're more tools. They don't work all the time. I've had the, the chance to play around with some, uh, some of these just fall the prototype ones, and I'll tell you what, there's some times when that, that credge is gonna be great, there's times when the power switch work, there's other times where they like the, uh, the finisher better, and there's some times where they don't work that great. I'll be honest, they like the traditional jerk bait better, and there's been some times where, you know, just the jig head minnow is better. They want something really passive, they don't want much action. But having options is good, just like shallow, you catch them one day on a spinnerbait, the next day they're on a square bill, then they want a lip list. Next time they want a wacky or flipping it in there. This really opens up the game and it opens up that third dimension. Instead of just going either depth or straight forward, this lets you back up, lets you get side to side. So check them out. They're available on uh, Pure Fishing now on our, excuse me, on the Berkeley website. So I'll put a link down in the description below. Retailers are getting them here very shortly if they don't have them already by the time I post this. And uh, try them this spring. I think you guys are gonna like them. Obviously, live scope's the, the deal these days. And if you like the sweatshirt, have this and all sorts of other goofy crap uh, that I'll put a link down to below. So thanks for watching. Good luck this spring. And uh, share some of those big catches with me. See you guys.